Hey, what's up guys? Today I'm doing a review on the El Primer Asalto Mexican Made Boxing Gloves. So check it out. Hey guys, Carlo here. Today I'm doing a review on the Mexican Made El Primer Asalto Boxing Gloves. I got mine in this beautiful white metallic teal and metallic red colorway, 14 ounces in lace-up. This is a smaller boutique brand, so in regards to the type of closure, whether it's lace-up or Velcro, sizing as well as colorways, it's, it really varies. I've always said these smaller brands are kind of seasonal, especially compared to some of the larger brands that don't carry a huge inventory of the same color with multiple sizes and, and different closures. Uh, they usually have custom gloves made for their customers, and then if they do make gloves to keep in inventory, they're usually always different colorways and they only have a limited supply of sizes and type of closure. So do keep that in mind. If you see a colorway you like that comes in the size and closure you're looking for, oftentimes than not, it's better just to pull the trigger because once they sell out, you don't know when they're gonna ever, I guess, re-inventory that same colorway and spec of glove you're looking for. And if you do want it, then you'll probably have to get them custom at that point, which may cost you extra. Plus, there's now a lead time, right? There's a wait time, usually a, a few months from the time that you uh, make your initial payment for the glove. So those are just things to kind of keep in mind if you do see a colorway you like. Another thing I wanted to mention was that you can check out their gloves on their social media. Uh, they have an Instagram as, as well as, I believe, a Facebook. They currently don't have a website that I know of. I will put the link to their Instagram down below in the description box and you can check out what they have to offer. If you are looking to order the gloves, I would shoot them a, a, a DM to see if uh, they can um, get you the, the gloves that you're looking for. So do keep that in mind if you are looking to purchase a pair of your own. The glove is made of full genuine leather on the entire exterior of the glove. It utilizes your standard polyester satin liner on the interior of the hand compartment and utilizes latex foam padding. That I say is medium to soft in density, definitely not a stiff glove. I say this is very similar to some of the other latex gloves out there that I've tried in the past, like Campion, Zepol, Lopez, some other brands that use latex foam padding. So you do have that latex foam there. Now the brand El Primer Asalto essentially means in Espanol and Spanish, it means the first round, if you translate it over, and was founded by Jose Paz. I want to give a big shout out to my buddy Louis who actually got me these gloves and is a friend of Jose's and wanted me to try these out because I haven't done a review on these gloves uh, on my channel yet. So very thankful for that. So thank you, Louis, if you're watching this for getting me uh, these gloves. Now, from a design standpoint, for 14 ounce gloves, I say that these are right on par with other Mexican gloves in terms of sizing profile. They're not a huge 14 ounce gloves, nor, nor are they super compact. I say they're right there in the middle. They also do not, don't have that super wide hand pocket like the Nakali and the Authentic Casanova has. It has a little bit more of a streamlined style in terms of the, the hand pocket uh, with this glove. So not overly huge or small. I say right there in the middle, uh, you do have the El Primer Salto logo on the back of the glove, which is basically like an X that partitions off. It looks like a crown um, and two gloves that face horizontally. And then you also have uh, I believe the uh, El Primer Salto, which looks like a P and an A uh, right there in font on the back glove. So you have a pretty cool looking logo. Uh, rotating to the thumb side, you also have it written down, El Primer Salto, made in Mexico right there with that metallic teal. The metallic teal on here looks really nice, very similar to some of the other metallics you get out there uh, with some of the other brands. Yeah, coming to the palm side, again, the full palm is metallic teal and the inner portion of the thumb is metallic red, including the piping. You do have flat laces with plastic tips. I feel that the laces are definitely too short. It would have been nice to have longer laces. I don't think I could get more than one revolution around my wrist. So uh, definitely would invest in longer laces with these gloves and um, hopefully they add longer laces in the future for the gloves that they're making because these are definitely too short with these uh, plastic tips. Uh, you do again have that polyester satin liner on the inside there that's pretty standard the 14 ounce weight tag right down here at the bottom white piping at the bottom of the cuff i'd say about an inch 
of soft padding on the interior of the hand compartment and definitely a denser EVA style foam on the back of the wrist. The wrist itself has a metallic teal and it has that cross X stitch pattern that's double stitched on the back of the wrist. So that looks really good. You also have, I'd say about a half inch, uh, maybe a quarter to a half inch of firm EVA style foam on the inside of the wrist support that goes all the way up, double stitching throughout. You also have this stitch X pattern uh, and that's really purely just for aesthetics to kind of give it its own little unique look right there. Uh, we do have a really large grip bar that is nice and firm on the grip bar partition. More stitching on the inside, ventilated holes on our inner part of the thumb. And lastly, you do have a leather attached thumb in white. So overall, a beautiful looking glove. I love this color scheme. This white and teal really goes well together. And I actually like the fact that they didn't split the palm to two different colors. I like that it's one solid color and you have a little bit of that red that gives you just, a, just enough contrast that goes with the red on the boxing gloves on the back of the thumb. So I definitely love the fact that they use the colorways and it's not, it doesn't feel like the colors are either drowned out or there's too, too much going on. I think it's a, it's a really a good balance when it comes to the colorway of the glove. Quality wise, the gloves are pretty good. Um, I'd say that the opportunities I found is going to be the white uh, that they use on here, the white dye they use for the leather, I feel it could have been done better. It's, it's, it feels like it's almost translucent. I don't know if I can capture, capture this on video, but if you look on the back of the glove on both gloves, it seems to be almost like bleeding through. Like you can kind of see the natural color of the leather coming through on the white. Like it wasn't done all the way through. It's almost like when you roll, if you ever painted a wall and you put the first coat of paint on, you can still kind of see the wall behind it because you have to go over it maybe with two or three coats to really get that nice solid color if you're painting the wall white. I feel like they did like one coat of paint with that, with this glove and that's it. And you could still kind of see the wall behind it if that makes sense. I'm trying to use that as an analogy, but that's kind of what I feel with the dye they use on here. Um, also, the stitching, particularly on this X pattern right here, you can see it's start, starting to kind of fray. Um, so I feel like they just did that just for the aesthetics of the glove. But if you're gonna do that, then don't like have a piece, the pieces of thread that just kind of fray off because eventually that's just gonna get pulled on and ripped out. So I'm not a big fan of the fact that you put that X there, but then you have some fraying on both gloves uh, with that stitching. So that's one, one issue I found with the stitching right there. For the rest of the glove, the stitching is done pretty well. Um, there's a little bit of overstitching in certain areas, uh, like right here on this back portion. Um, you can see kind of the stitching kind of pulling between kind of like this little intersection where the thumb piping and the wrist support kind of connects to. So you see a little bit right there of some of the stitching kind of pulling through just a little bit. And it does it on both gloves. And you can see it on this side as well, where it's kind of pulling through a little bit right there. And inside of the finger finger compartment area looks really well, looks really good, done very well, excuse me. Where the thumb meets the index finger looks good as well. The back of the wrist support on the right glove, you can see that crisscross X pattern looks done very well. The, sym the symmetry of the glove is on point. So, you know, in terms of the height and the size of the gloves next to each other, they're pretty much on point and even the shape of the thumb. Essentially what I'm saying is that the, whoever made these gloves is the same person that's making the gloves. You don't have two separate people making the pair of gloves for you. So they're not, they're not off or crooked. So in terms of the profile of the glove, everything looks good right there. Weight wise, when I put these on the scale, um, these were exactly pretty much on point with weight. The left glove was at 14.1, right glove was at 14.2, which is amazing for a Mexican made glove, right? We've all seen this in the past where Mexican gloves tend to be severely overweight by an ounce or two, sometimes three ounces, where you think you got a 16 ounce glove, you put them on the scale and they're like 19 ounces. So, you know, you kind of get more for what you pay for, right? It's a heavier glove. So in terms of conditioning, you're getting a little bit more weight, but again, you also want to make sure that you're on point with weight especially when it comes to fight gloves. Um, these are training gloves, so I'm not as concerned with weight. If it's severely underweight, then I am, just because I feel like the glove should be more uh, heavier if I'm paying for that, rather than lighter um, for conditioning purposes when you're using it for bag work. Uh, but these were pretty much on point with weight, and you can see that it's a fairly well-balanced glove as well, holding it at the top and the bottom. You don't get 
very much sag at all. So the distribution of the padding throughout the glove is done very nicely. So my key takeaways when, the, when it comes to the quality is, is a couple small little stitching opportunities. And then the, uh, yeah, the dye, the paint on this leather is definitely kind of, you can kind of see through it, which I feel is definitely an opportunity with this glove. Comfort wise, putting the gloves on, the inner liner feels really good, comfortable. You don't have like excess material built up around the hand compartment or where the fingers sit at or around the wrist. So in terms of the liner, feels really good on the inside. Wrist support feels good. It doesn't feel like the, the wrist pocket or where my forearm enters the glove is too wide to where you have gaps on the side of your arm. So that's really good there. Um, the, the big takeaway here initially is going to be the thumb, the thumb uh, piping, not the positioning, but the piping is very tight. And I feel like it kind of chokes down on the fat part of my thumb. The position of it is actually pretty solid. It's just the issue with that piping being too tight, especially on the right glove. The left glove is tight as well, but it's definitely tighter on the right. The other thing is the thumb is too short. So when I make a fist, you can see it, it, it kind of pulls down, that attached thumb pulls down on the tip. And if you have longer fingers or, or, or bigger hands, I can foresee that being a little annoying when you pull down on it. And it seems that the right glove pulls down more than the, than the left. Um, so when your thumb punches, on the bag, you definitely feel like your thumb somewhat jams at the end. So it's a little on the shallow side. Definitely wish it was it was a deeper thumb. Grip bar feels really good. You can definitely feel that grip bar when you grip down. Um, the finger compartment, you can, you can tell that they put almost like a rolled piece of padding and neoprene to give, to give you that second, the secondary grip bar. So you're not just gripping on a piece of stitched leather. So I definitely like that, I applaud that. Um, the depth of the finger compartment is a little on the shallower side. I wish it was a little bit deeper so I can really put my hand in a deeper, uh, deeper posture, if you want to call it, and really make my, uh, you know, make a nice tight fist. So I definitely think that the finger pocket could be deeper. The, wet, the width of it is actually perfect. It's not too wide. It's not too narrow. I, I just think it's a little bit on the shallow side. Um, and they utilize latex foam padding. This is not a horsehair glove. So I'd say that these are semi broken in. It's gonna take a little bit of time to break these gloves in. They're not ultra stiff, but you do have to break these in to really get that full extension to open your hand all the way for catching and parrying shots. So uh, I'd say it comes semi broken in. So in terms of comfort, the, the big opportunities are gonna be the thumb, especially the piping around the fat part of the thumb. Uh, and the uh, the tip of the thumb as well as the depth of the finger compartment with a, uh, a little bit of a break in period but everything else about the interior of the hand compartment and comfort uh, feels really good protection and performance wise these to me are a balanced training glove uh, for a mexican style glove the latex foam padding is similar to like other brands i mean that's what reyes is known for is using latex in their gloves and their training gloves as well so this is the type of pattern that you can use for sparring. You can use this for hitting the bag, doing mitt work, everything in the gym. You can use this, this type of padding. You get a good amount of that feedback and pop. You get, you get that nice flat punch surface. Uh, it's not rounded out. And that latex foam does a good job of absorbing a good amount of shock. It's not the most super protective glove. I wouldn't compare it to a gel glove or anything like that, like those, those bag gloves. But again, protection also is how well you can make a fist, right? So I feel like it does a decent job allowing you to make a really nice tight fist. I definitely think the, the deeper finger compartment would be beneficial. And then just the, the, the depth of that thumb compartment being a little bit deeper would be even more comfortable and put you in a better punch position. But the foam padding on here uh, feels really good and is also a highlight of the glove is that latex foam. So you, could, you can really get a good round of bag working with these and feel comfortable and confident with using your power shots, not feeling um, that you're apprehensive with your training because you might injure your hand. Some some gloves will give you that feeling where if you go a little too hard in the paint, you're, <laughs> you're gonna re-aggravate a, a nagging injury or you might injure your hands just in general. And I don't get that feel with these gloves. Cost-wise, these gloves are uh, 1,500 uh, Mexican pesos. So when you convert that over, it's a, one of the best bang to bucks, uh, bang to buck gloves you can find. They, they converts over to 80 US dollars. Uh, I don't think you're gonna find any Mexican made glove at that price point of 1500 pesos, which is $80. I mean, to me, even with the opportunities it does have, 
for a Mexican boutique brand. Uh, that's a killer deal, 80 bucks. Now granted, you're gonna have to pay for shipping, but even then, for $80 for this quality, this caliber of glove, uh, it's gonna be really hard to beat. This kind of reminds me of, of Thai gloves, where Thai gloves have excellent manufacturing, just attention to detail, and the, they're hard to beat when it comes to pricing because they price their gloves so well and competitively. You don't get these inflated, you know, two, $300 gloves. You know, they're usually around that $100 mark. And the fact that these are 80 bucks to me is a killer deal. So my best advice is check out their Instagram. They have a lot of cool colorways. Uh, I'm sure after this video, their inbox is gonna get flooded <laughs> with, with messages inquiring about the gloves. But check out what they have to offer. I would inquire about it. Uh, you may have to, to use Google Translate to, to translate if you speak in, uh, in English to Spanish to make it easier to communicate. Uh, but definitely a solid overall glove. I feel like there's some small improvements they can make and tweak to make this even better. Uh, but at that price point of $80, these are gonna be really hard to beat. So if you guys have any questions or comments, you guys know what to do, put them down below. I'll put the link to their Instagram down below in the description box. See you guys later. Peace.